In the beginning, there was only the Aether and the Keepers. Among them were two beings who would later be known by many names. One would be known as Dr. Monty, and the other as the Shadow Man. One day, the Keepers began crafting a device known as the Summoning Key. It would allow them to manipulate the Aether. Holding the power to alter reality, they use it to create a Gotha. The Keepers soon master the ability to travel between different dimensions and discover an alternate one known as the Dark Aether. Some Keepers begin experimenting with the Dark Aether, which corrupts and corrodes their souls. Amongst these Keepers is the Shadow Man. The Corrupted Keepers then create the Aether Pyramid, a device capable of absolute power. A divide forms between them and the Keepers untainted by darkness, and soon enough, war breaks out. After some time facing defeat, the Corrupted Keepers decide to hide the Aether Pyramid on a moon within one of their newly discovered dimensions. And after banishing the Corrupted Keepers to the Dark Aether beneath creation, the remaining Keepers take on the role of Guardians. Now trapped in the Dark Aether, over eons, the Corrupted Keepers begin to contort and evolve, eventually looking nothing like their former selves. They become the Apothecans. Their desire, above all else, was to one day return to Agatha. In 5 AD, the Apothecans discover a planet called Earth. Knowing this planet has a gateway to Agatha, they send down meteors of Element 115, believing that one day humanity would use it to wage war against themselves opening a rift that would allow the Apothecans to escape the Dark Aether. Over a thousand years later in 1292, their prediction comes to life. As humanity discover Element 115, they free the Apothecans, causing the start of the Great War. As the war between humanity and the Apothecans wages on, a knight known as Pablo Marinus is saved from the clutches of a Margoire by four unknown heroes. These heroes would later become known as Primus. After seven whole years of fighting in 1299, together with the Keepers and Humanity, Primus finally defeats the Apothecans, bringing the Great War to an end. Before they seemingly disappear from history, Primus instructs the Wolf King, who led his knights into the war, to begin building the castle of Durais and Draca. And so the castle is built, and as 18 years pass in 1318, the Wolf King is killed in a separate battle by bow and arrow, Honouring his dying request, his loyal servant Arthur scatters his bones around the grounds of Dryas and Draca, accompanied by his wolf. A day after this, Arthur was then teleported by temporal rifts to Resolution 1295 in 2025 Angola. Hundreds of years then go by where all is calm, until 1885, where a blacksmith named Jebediah Brown was living in a mining town in the Old West called Purgatory Point. The mines contained Element 115 and soon started to affect anyone who went down there. One day, a miner named Clines Farnsworth entered the mine, stayed down there for 10 days, and when he came back up, he was changed. He was like a feral animal, rabid and carnivorous, his eyes emitting a red light. Clive had become zombified. The first home Clive stumbled upon was Jebediah's mother's, and as she went outside to meet him, Clive ripped her throat out. The townsfolk then shot Clive dead and laid Jebediah's mother to rest. Curious to see the blue rock, needing answers, Jeb headed down into the mines himself. On April the 19th, after spending days in the mine, Jebediah had a vision. Two angels came down from the heaven. They told him he needs to be ready to prepare for what was coming. They asked him to build a machine, a -a pack-a-punch machine, and after building it, people went far and wide to upgrade their weapons. Two months later, Jebediah had another vision. The two angels returned, this time asking him to create an Argothan device. The Argothan device had three counterparts, the blood of an elder god found at the bottom of the ocean, an elemental shard created by forging four human souls to a rock of element 115, and a metallic vessel. Jebediah wasn't able to acquire the blood or forge the shard, but being a blacksmith, he was able to make the vessel. After crafting it, all the townsfolk began to succumb to the effects of Element 115. They started acting crazy, having visions and paranoia. Jebediah also feared the disease had consumed him, and after going to visit his mother in the cemetery, he decided to dig her up. He took her back to the town and put her body inside of the pack-a-punch machine, hoping it would bring her back. However, she vanished, and suddenly before his eyes, a spirit that looked just like her appeared in front of him. Only she was way younger and now floated around the house playing the piano. After this, the angels returned to Jeb one last time, asking him to upgrade the vessel he built using the pack-a-punch machine. And when he did this, the very next day, the old mining town, along with its people, were teleported to Angola in the year 2025 by a temporal rift caused by the fracturing of the earth in the future. Jebediah and the remaining townsfolk were killed by the undead shortly after. Many years later in 1908, a meteor containing element 115 crashes near the Tunguska River in Siberia, 
In 1931, after a large deposit of element 115 was found near Buslaue, Germany, a German scientist named Dr. Ludwig Maxis was sent to investigate and, when he arrives there, decides to form Group 935, an experimental organisation dedicated to the study of element 115. He sets up the Doris facility in Breslauer, swearing to use the newly discovered element to improve the human condition by developing advanced technologies. A few years later, Maxis's daughter Samantha is born, her mother dies during childbirth. Dr. Maxis invites Dr. Edward Richthofen, also known as Ultimus Richthofen, to join Group 935, and although Richthofen agrees, he is secretly acting on behalf of the Illuminati's interests. In 1937, the Imperial Japanese Army discover meteor fragments of 115 in a swamp within Japanese territories. With this, they decide to build the Rising Sun facility to continue research, and a group called Division 9 is created to oversee its operation. At the same time, the United States government also discover deposits of element 115 at Groom Lake in Nevada. By 1939, Maxis and Richthofen started working on the first teleportation experiments with a matter transference prototype. The experiments were unsuccessful. The subjects were teleported, but their chemical composition was altered, leaving them catatonic and changed. Using element 115, Maxis and Richthofen decided to resurrect one of the teleported corpses. Initially, it obeyed them, but soon became rabid and attacked, and so the test subject was euthanized. At this time, Richthofen also began development of the Wunderwaffe DG2. In the same year, Maxis turned to the Reichstag and the Nazi party for additional funding. They agreed to his request, expressing interest in Group 935's weapon research, teleportation technology, and the reanimated undead subjects to help the Nazis win the war. In the meantime, Richthofen and Schuster continued working on teleportation and successfully teleported a walnut. This result, however, failed to impress Maxis, who revealed to Richthofen that Group 935 would soon be funded by Nazi Germany. Richthofen worried this would lead to mass defections, and so he decided to continue the experiments with Schuster behind the back of Maxis. In the early 1940s, Richthofen and Schuster conducted the first human teleportation test. Richthofen was so confident in its success that he volunteered himself. But instead of teleporting straight back to the mainframe, he was teleported to the moon where he encountered the Ether Pyramid, hidden here by the Apothecans many years before he decided to call it the MPD. While inspecting the device, Richthofen was electrocuted and began hearing the many voices of corruption in his head. One of those was the Shadow Man. The device then teleported him to a jungle in the Himalayas, known as Shangri-La, where he was worshipped by the natives who built an altar in his name. This was where Richthofen encountered the focusing stone for the first time, a piece of 115, and now corrupted by the Dark Aether, he was gradually driven insane by an obsession to reach Argotha. A few weeks later, Richthofen returned to Doris with a plan to build a station on the moon called Griffin Station. At this time, he also renounced his involvement with the Illuminati. When asked how he could abandon his obligation to the Order, he said, Teddy was a liar, and frustrated with Maxis's alignment with Germany, other disgruntled Group 935 scientists decided to join Richthofen's cause, assisting him to construct Griffin Station. Several months later, Maxis instructs his assistant Sophia to write a letter to the Reichstag High Command requesting additional funding, stating that Group 935 lacked not only the funding, but sufficient volumes of 115 as well. And in response to his request, Nazi Germany created two new facilities for Group 935 in Berlin. They were known as the Kino Facility, a repurposed theatre, and the Asylum Facility at the Wittenau Sanatorium. Also, as per Germany's request, the Imperial Japanese Army handed over the Rising Sun Facility to Group 935, leaving them and Division 9 to work together. Group 935 continued to grow, and it was at this time they established two more facilities, one in Siberia near the Tunguska River, and a research facility at Dreisendraka Castle that they called Eagle's Nest. In 1941, a Russian soldier named Nikolai Belensky discovers his wife is killed during the German advance into the Soviet Union, while his brother is killed in the Battle of Stalingrad. In an effort to numb his pain, he turns to vodka. By 1942, at just eight years old, in order to keep her company, Maxis gives his daughter Samantha a pregnant dog named Fluffy. Also at this time, Griffin Station was complete. Richthofen appointed Dr. Groff as lead scientist and tasked him and Schuster to discover new ways to power the MPD. At the same time, Richthofen completed his prototype of the Wunderwaffe DG2, while at the Rising Sun facility, Maxis develops the ray gun with Dr. H. Porter working on a second generation model. In May of 1942, after Group 935's employees returned from a recovery mission in Africa, Richthofen reports that they found a number of artifacts 
from an old Western American town buried underground. Among the artifacts and documents recovered was a piece of the Pack-a-Punch machine from Jebediah Brown. Richtofen gave the schematics to Dr. H. Porter, where he was to rebuild it. Richtofen also discovered plans for the Argothan device and the Vril Vessel. As a result of temporal rifts caused by Ultimus travelling through time and the future, Dr. Monty reaches across time and space and offers little nudges. One nudge is he helps Group 935 to develop their Element 115 fused elixirs. They create four medicinal beverages known as Juggernog, Quick Revive, Speed Cola and Double Tap. While Group 935 continue development of the Pack-a-Punch machine, at Griffin Station, Groff and Schuster unwittingly discover how to charge the MPD when Schuster kills a rat near the device. Its death begins charging the pyramid by filling its tank. They report their findings back to Richtofen, who begins sending soldiers and scientists to be sacrificed to charge the MPD. By the end of 1942, a Japanese warrior known as Takio Masaki is dispatched by the Emperor to oversee the work of Group 935 and Division 9 at the Rising Sun facility. During this time, Richtofen also creates the Monkey Bomb, and Group 935 on Griffin Station develop the Mule Kick Elixir. Maxis expresses his concerns over Element 115's impact on Richtofen's behaviour. Although he no longer trusts him, he leaves his daughter Samantha in Richtofen's care, as he is transferred over to the Kino facility with his assistant Sophia to focus on creating Germany's undead army. In 1943, Nikolai Blensky, who would later be known as Ultimus Nikolai, was captured during the Battle of Stalingrad and became a test subject for Group 935. That same year, Takio Masaki, who would later be known as Ultimus Takio, was also captured by Group 935 on the orders of the Emperor. A year later in 1944, a Mexican spy named Pablo Marinus was captured by Group 935 at Duraz and Draca. In his cell, Pablo wrote of visions of the Great War. He describes a great battle against strange, demon-like creatures who were trying to devour the Earth. In his visions, he saw four knights protect him from certain death. He made a note that the knights wore tunics similar to the statues at Duraz and Draca. On June the 4th of 1945, an allied plane malfunctions over an airfield and crashes. German army trucks transporting the undead and element 115 between Group 935 facilities are struck in the crash, causing a zombie outbreak. The four marines who survived the crash then hold out against the undead in a nearby bunker. 13 days later, an OSS operative called Peter McCain infiltrates Group 935. At the same time on Griffin Station, Groff and Schuster develop the wave gun, and in July of 1945, Richtofen travels to the Siberian facility to do further research on his live specimens. And as her temporary guardian, he takes Samantha with him as well as the Vril device. A few days after his arrival in Siberia, a reporter was arrested near to the facility. When Richtofen interrogated him, the reporter revealed he was working for Mr. Rapt, who was looking for several artifacts. Among them was the Vril vessel, also called the Seal of Duality. After Richtofen refused to give him the vessel, he ordered the reporter to be killed. On August 1945, Group 935 began to transfer the three test subjects for experimentation to the Siberian facility. These were Ultimus Nikolai, Pablo Marinus, and Ultimus Takio. While working in Siberia, not only did Group 935 create the Deadshot Daiquiri Elixir, but Richtofen also started looking for a way to create an elemental shard in order to build the Argothan device. At this time, CIA handler Cornelius Purnell confirms that Peter McCain has successfully infiltrated Group 935 and has been transferred to the asylum facility. Cornelius suspects that Group 935 is losing control of their experiments and sends in a Marine Recon team, led by Tank Dempsey, to extract McCain. However, Peter is outed as a spy and captured. Back in Siberia in September of 1945, during an operation with Harvey Yeena, who was another American spy, Dr. Richtofen, in an attempt to unlock the human mind, extracts Pablo Marinus's spleen. Upon doing this, he is killed. Or at least that's what Richtofen believes. However, Pablo ends up surviving and would later awaken once the facility is abandoned, where he would be trapped for the next 20 years. Richtofen also begins to perform experiments on Samantha at the same time that World War II comes to an end. Several days later, the Marine Recon team consisting of Tank Dempsey, Smokey, John Banana and Paxton Gunner Ridge arrive at the asylum where an outbreak occurs. Unbeknown to them, Peter McCain had already managed to escape where Pennell had sent him on his next mission to the Rising Sun facility, meaning the Marines are trapped in the asylum. Just like Peter, Paxton manages to escape. Meanwhile, John and Smokey were killed by the undead, leaving Dempsey to be captured by Group 935 and sent to Richtofen in Siberia to replace Pablo Marinus as his test subject. When he arrives at the site, Richtofen continues his experiments on Nikolai Takio and Dempsey. He documents the personality traits of his test subjects. He says, 
Dempsey's intellect seems low, but his will is strong. Takio was still staring at the floor, muttering what sounds like some kind of proverb over and over again, and Nikolai had recently begun responding to stimuli, but only after injections of a new serum made primarily of vodka. Richthofen noted that their minds had almost been entirely broken, with no remaining memory of who they once were. As he continued to find a way to build the Orgothan device, Richthofen manages to send a piece of the souls of his three test subjects into a processed rock of element 115 using the Vril Vessel. But since he needed a fourth, he decided to use his own soul. As the souls were injected into the rock, it transformed and created a shard of glass. Unbeknownst to Richthofen, by forging their souls to the elemental shard, he bound his soul and the ones from Nikolai, Takio and Dempsey to the ether across all dimensions. Every different version of them was now connected to the ether through time and space. However, after being reported to Dr. Maxis for using Group Man 35's resources to work on his own personal projects, Maxis ordered that the elemental shard was to be sent to Division 9 as they were better equipped to study it appropriately. This, along with learning from Yina that Maxis didn't mass produce the Wonder Waffer DG2 as he promised, angry, Richthofen then started plotting to destroy Maxis and his daughter, where he vowed that he would no longer continue to work on Maxis's undead army. With the war now over, Maxis returned to Doris in October of 1945 and ordered Richthofen to do the same so they could continue their work on the matter transference device. A few days later, Richthofen arrived back at Doris with his test subjects and Samantha, and on October the 12th, Groff contacted Richthofen to inform him that the MPD had been powered up and was awaiting the conduits. Richthofen then told Groff he would proceed with Operation Shield, which was to dispose of Maxis and Samantha. A day later, on October the 13th of 1945, during a series of teleportation test trials, after a number of failed experiments, Maxis decides to use Samantha's dog, Fluffy, as a test subject. Richthofen and Maxis place the dog into the machine, teleporting her away, and when she returns, she is zombified. Samantha walks into her father's experiment to see what Fluffy has become. She then runs into the teleporter. Maxis chases her and Richthofen seals both of them into the test chamber along with the dog, teleporting all three of them away. Fluffy ended up being teleported to the ether where she had her pups. Those pups became the hellhounds. Maxis was teleported to the crazy place where he learned about the power to merge with electricity and Samantha was teleported to Griffin Station. When she arrived, she ran inside of the MPD where she became corrupted by the Dark Aether. When Richthofen learned about the incident, he ordered Groff to teleport Maxis to the moon to coax Samantha out of the device. Maxis approached the MPD where he persuaded her to come out and once she did, Maxis gave her instructions to kill them kill them all. Maxis then shot himself and merged with the technology on Griffin Station. Listening to her father's instructions, Samantha then enters the MPD and unleashes the undead upon the base, killing anyone involved of the organisation. The next day, Samantha unleashes an outbreak at the Doris facility. Dr. Porter activates the alarm before killing himself with a cyanide pill. Richthofen then returns to the facility where he awakens the test subjects of Dempsey, Takio and Nikolai, and with no recollection of who they once were or who Richthofen was, they agreed to help him the four would become known as Ultimus. Several days later, as part of the beginning of Richthofen's plan, Ultimus travelled to the Rising Sun facility to recover Richthofen's diary. When they get there, an outbreak occurs, and they discover the corpse of Peter McCain, who died attempting to parachute down into the site. Richthofen then recovers his diary and begins to form his plan to defeat Samantha. A week later, Ultimus returned to Doris, where Richthofen planned to use the teleporter to return to Moon and confront Samantha. However, when stepping inside, they accidentally fire the Wonder Waffer DG2, where it overloads the teleporter and sends Ultimus forward in time to the Kino facility in 1963, ultimately causing Richthofen to drop his diary. A few days later, Group 935 is completely abandoned, and so the United States and the Soviet Union travel to the abandoned Group 935 facilities and recover some of their resources. Among these items is Richthofen's diary, which is taken by the Soviets. The Pentagon hire many former Group 935 scientists in an effort to replicate their work, one of those is Dr. Schuster, and as with their US counterparts, the Soviets also hire Group 935 scientists. Among them is Dr. Harvey Yena, who forms the Ascension Group. The Pentagon begins experiments involving their own versions of the undead. The US government transfers a number of Element 115 experiments to the Groom Lake facility. Meanwhile, Dr. Gersh and Yuri Zavosky begin working at the Ascension Group. The Pentagon construct their own prototype teleporters using the ones recovered from Group 935, while the Ascension Group create PhD Flopper and Staminop based off Group 935's research for medicinal elixirs. Dr. Gersh also begins working on creating the Thundergun, and Yuri starts work on the Gersh device, codenamed Project Mercury. 
The Americans then begin developing their own version of the Wonder Waffle and the Winter's Howl. At the Pentagon, Major Sawyer assigns Dr. Schuster with the task of establishing a teleporter link between the Pentagon and Groom Lake. With great success, he is then tasked with establishing a link between Groom Lake and the Moon. After many years of unsuccessful attempts, some time after, as part of teleportation test number 11, Dr. Schuster realised the matter transference device at Groom Lake, and attempting to teleport Private Hastings to Griffin Station, he is teleported away, but never returns. However, to their surprise, they did get an unexpected arrival. The scientists ended up accidentally teleporting Ultimus, Richthofen, Nikolai, Takio and Dempsey down from the moon, from the future, to present day 1963. But when they arrived, their bodies were in a very bad way. Nikolai, Takio and Dempsey were in a delusional near-catatonic state, and Richthofen initially was believed to be dead. But on closer examination, they discovered his body was still alive, just with zero brain activity. This was because Richthofen's body had no soul after the events of Buried in 2035. But anyway, after this, Purnell then orders that the Ultimus crew are to be kept at Groom Lake, as they would be ideal candidates for their Element 115 testing. They are locked in Hangar 4. A few years later, Pablo Marinus, now a hermit living in the lighthouse of Group 935's abandoned facility, sends out a radio broadcast asking for help. His transmission is picked up by Dr. Gersh and Harvey Yena at the Ascension base. They send a recon unit out to Siberia, and when they arrive, Pablo tells them of an artifact known as the Orgothan device. He informs them it is capable of granting that of which any man desires. Pablo says he can construct the device, but first needs them to bring him the blood of an ancient creature, and so gives them coordinates. Pablo tells Gersh and Yina once they retrieve the blood, they must bring it back to him straight away, because when it's exposed to elements for extended amount of time, it becomes volatile and unstable. Pablo warned them that the blood is alive. Soon after, Yina and his team begin their mission, the coordinates lead them to the bottom of the ocean. When they arrive, what they see before them is a creature gargantian in size. Yina describes it as being magnificent, otherworldly, a remnant of a different age. This creature was an elder god, once belonging to the Apothecan race. Yina took a blood sample of the creature and returned it to Gersh. However, instead of taking it straight to Pablo, as instructed, they decide to carry out their own studies. While conducting their experiments, they find the blood is not so much fluid as it is very much alive. It moves, it changes shape at will, reacts to their touch. Even though the creature died, the organisms inside survived trapped at the bottom of the ocean. And because of this, Gersh decides that the blood would be suitable for their primate testing back at the Ascension base. Injecting monkeys with this blood would allow them not only to survive space flight, but give them rejuvenation abilities, making them more powerful and stronger. After further study in the blood, Yina begins to notice it is changing composition and becoming more angry. Back with the Ultimus crew, after teleporting from 1940s to Reese to Kine de Toten in 1963, this marked the first time Ultimus travelled across space and time. Temporal rifts began to occur across different dimensions, and in light of these developments, Dr. Monty felt obligated to step in. He begins making changes in the background across time, where he does things such as help Group 935 invent the perk machines, and provides the Ultimus crew with chalk drawings on the wall, a weapons box, moving the Pack-a-Punch machine, giving them power-ups and little nudges like that. When at the Kino facility, after fighting against the Undead Horde, Ultimus eventually locate a lunar lander and use it to fly to their next destination, which is the Ascension facility. In the weeks prior to Ultimus's arrival, Yuri becomes corrupted by Samantha's voice after reading Richthofen's diary. Noticing Yuri's descent into madness, Gersh removes him from Project Mercury and transfers him to Rocket Research, a project involving them sending monkeys into outer space. But unhappy with his move, Yuri continues to work on the Gersh device. Obeying Samantha's wishes, once the Gersh device is finished, Yuri tricks Gersh into activating it, opening up a rift which not only absorbs Gersh, destroying his body and trapping him inside of the Casmere mechanism, but Yuri is also absorbed where he is transported to the Pentagon, and this rift then allows Samantha to travel through. When Ultimus eventually arrive at the Ascension facility on November the 6th, 1963, an outbreak occurs and Gersh begs them to free him from the Casmere mechanism. Richthofen recovers his diary and learns that he needs the real device from the Siberian facility 
facility for the next part of his plan. At the same time in the Pentagon, JFK, Robert McNamara, Fidel Castro and Richard Nixon were discussing a future alliance between the United States and Cuba to fight Samantha when an outbreak occurs in the building. Yuri, otherwise known as the Pentagon Thief, who was responsible for the first outbreak, was sent by Samantha to thwart their survival. Back at Ascension, keeping their promise, as Ultimus free Gersh from the Casmir Mechanism, he then sends them to their next destination before he begins travelling across space and time. With the departure of Ultimus from Ascension, both outbreaks are contained and Yuri was arrested. In an effort to avoid another undead outbreak, the US government creates the Broken Arrow program. Establishing several facilities across the country, Cornelius Purnell is promoted from Handler to Stations Chief. The Groom Lake program is then folded into Broken Arrow, where they recover the Shard of Element 115 from an abandoned Division 9 facility. On the 1st of January 1964, after the disappearance of Gersh, Harvey Yena finally decides to transport the Apothic and Blood to Pablo Marinus in the abandoned Group 935 facility. In turn, hoping to use the Argothan device to end the Cold War and bring humanity together to create a better world. He loads the blood onto a ship, locking it in a sealed container. However, 15 minutes out from the facility, the blood comes alive breaks containment and attacks the ship's crew. Everyone on board is killed and the ship crashes in Siberia. In 1973, a man named Russman begins working at Broken Arrow. Over the course of his employment, his extensive exposure to Element 115 leads to significant memory loss. Broken Arrow then begins live animal experiments with the Shard, where they create the Bios and the Denizens, but a breach containment involving the Bios happens at one of the Broken Arrow facilities, and Russman is one of the few to escape alive. The facility is then shut down and abandoned, while its projects are transferred to other locations. After extensive deliberations between the Department of Defense and the CIA, they finally approve Project MK Alpha, which is an extension of the CIA's mind control program, and due to the amount of Element 115 required, they agree that the nuclear testing site near Groom Lake is the ideal location. They assign Broken Arrow to the facility and provide additional funding for the construction of the American Pyramid device, otherwise known as the APD, which was going to be used as a method of interrogation. Soon after the approval, Cornelius Purnell is promoted to Operations Director and once the site is constructed, they name it Camp Edward. One of the first things that Broken Arrow create here are home service robots called ADAMs. Their job was to assist with everyday needs, but due to Element 115, these robots began to develop their own emotions. And so Broken Arrow decided they were going to be used as soldiers in war. Shortly after, they then began to use the APD to interrogate Yuri Zavosky after his capture relating to the Pentagon outbreak. However, Purnell gets frustrated with Yuri's answers and ends up electrocuting him to death. Purnell then begins to experiment with the elemental shard. He orders Paxton Gunner Ridge to retrieve Peter McCain's dead body from the Rising Sun facility and bring it back to Camp Edward, where Purnell, using the elemental shard, assists in bringing Peter back to life. And it's a success. However, after Peter was reassigned to work for Broken Arrow, noticing Purnell was beginning to turn crazy, he decided he was to inform the Department of Defense of his actions. But before he could, Purnell killed Peter and trapped his soul inside of one of the ADAM robots. After years of exposure to Element 115 and the Shard, Purnell starts to become corrupted by the Dark Aether. Hearing voices in his head, he is gradually driven insane with an obsession to reach Argotha. In an attempt to merge with the Aether, he secures himself inside of the APD, along with the Elemental Shard, and powers it up. But the experiment goes wrong, and a shard of electricity shoots up his spine, causing him to change. He becomes the entity known as Avogadro. A containment breach of Nova 6 gas then leaks throughout the facility, allowing Avogadro to break free of the APD, and after a long fought out battle, eventually he is contained again, locked back inside of the APD, along with the elemental shard. If he was ever to break free again, a nuclear bomb was rigged above the facility as a failsafe. The facility is then shut down and abandoned, where years later, a reporter by the name of Malton Johnson comes to investigate. He arrives to find the ADM robots have taken over the place, using it as their Atropolis, and so, alone and scared, Malton locks himself inside of the bunker. Back with Ultimus, after entering the Rift and Ascension, they eventually arrive in a locked room at the Siberian facility on March the 17th, 2011, where George A. Romero, who stumbled upon Group 935's research, was making a movie with Sarah Michelle Gellar, Robert England, Danny Trio, and Michael Rooker. An outbreak soon occurs in Siberia, where George is turned into a zombie, leaving the surviving actors to recover the Vril device for Ultimus, since they were locked 
locked behind a door. And so, that's what they do, they give it to them, Ultimus then teleport to their next location, leaving the Call of the Dead cast trapped. Their fate remains unknown, but six weeks later, Romero's assistant Sally, while looking through his research about Group 935, was teleported to Shangri-La and became trapped inside of a time loop. Similarly, two British explorers named Brock and Gary, who travelled to Shangri-La in search of Argotha, also became trapped in this same time loop. As Ultimus continue their journey from Siberia, they eventually arrive at Shangri-La in the Himalayas on April 25th, 1956, in an effort to acquire the next artifact required to defeat Samantha. With the help of Brock and Gary, they assist Ultimus in acquiring the Focusing Stone, and now in possession of both the Vril device and the Focusing Stone, Ultimus Richthofen was ready to return to Moon. But, on their way, Dempsey accidentally fires a shot of the 3179 JGB215 whilst inside of the teleporter, causing Ultimus to travel to the Pentagon before the November 6 outbreak. At the same time, from the past, Yuri was sent by Samantha to release zombies kept in the Pentagon, before then being sent to the November 6 incident. But once Ultimus arrived at the Pentagon, they used the teleporter at Groom Lake to reach the moon. Once inside Griffin Station on October the 13th, 2024, Ultimus Richthofen reactivates the MPD, which reveals Samantha as she was when she first entered the device back in 1945. He then merges the Vril device and the Focusing Stone together, allowing him to switch bodies with Samantha. This gives Richthofen full control of the zombies and the ether, leaving Samantha now trapped in Richthofen's body. Maxis then reaches out to Ultimus, Dempsey, Takio and Nikolai through the station's electronics, asking them for their help to defeat Richthofen. They agree, launching three missiles to the Earth, leaving it fractured and broken, severing Richthofen's connection to the ether, but he still maintains control over the zombies. At the same time as the events on Moon back down on Earth, a nuclear bomb explodes outside of Nuketown as a result of Broken Arrow's drilling, and so both CIA and CDC operatives are sent to investigate, and when they arrive, they find an undead outbreak already in progress. One of the missiles from Moon then hits Nuketown, killing everyone on site, everyone except from Malton Johnson, who was still hiding inside of the nuclear bunker. Broken Arrow is then disabandoned after their primary facility is lost in a fire. It was believed to be an act of arson committed by employees, destroying evidence implicating them to the outbreak. And Russman, now without a job and a broken mind after 40 years of exposure to 115, is left to wonder the Earth. The missile launch left the Earth as a post-apocalyptic crumbling wasteland, littered with undead hordes as civilization collapsed. As survivors began to band together to form small human communities and shelters to protect themselves from the now global undead threat, Maxis realizes the failure of his original plan and begins contacting survivors to help them with his plan B. This other plan involved activating global polarization devices which would open a gateway to Agatha, where he would overpower Richthofen and use its energy to heal Earth. But, unbeknownst to his followers, Maxis secretly planned to commandeer the Aether's energy for his own use to open the gateway to Agatha and reunite with Samantha, which would ultimately destroy the Earth and its people. At the same time, Ultimus Richthofen, unsatisfied with his limited power over the undead, planned to activate the polarization devices as well. This would grant him further manipulation of both zombies and humans, which would also mend the rift, a direct gateway to Agatha. This would eternally damn the soul of Samantha. But, limited to communicating with those only capable of hearing voices of the ether, Richthofen begins his own quest for ultimate power. Over the years, Maxis's followers started constructing the first polarization device near the Hanford site in Green Run. However, soon enough they began doubting him. Believing him to be evil, they proceeded to destroy their electronics. At the same time, a society of survivors who ate the undead flesh was formed, they were called the Flesh. And one member who joins this group was Samuel Stuhlinger. As they ate the flesh of the undead, they gained a connection to the ether, giving them the ability to hear Richthofen's voice, who then tried to persuade them to construct the polarization devices in his favour. Eventually, a battle broke out between Maxis's followers and the Flesh, and as they fought, an undead horde descended upon them and destroyed all who remained. Samuel Stuhlinger was one of the few to escape. Richthofen and Maxis are then left with no one to communicate with near Green Run, where the first polarization device must be constructed. Several years later in 2035, Malton Johnson, who was the sole survivor of the nuclear incident and the missile strike at Camp Edward, met with Misty in a diner near Green Run. It was at this time they also encountered two more survivors, Russman, who had been wandering the earth, and Samuel Stuhlinger, one of the remaining members of the Flesh, who had used a stolen bus for transport from the abandoned Broken Arrow facility. These four would become known as Victus. At the Hanford site, 
Victus was contacted by Maxis, who revealed to them that the town was the location of a polarization device. At the same time, Richtofen contacted Samuel, instructing him to foil Maxis's plans by activating the pylon in his favour, beginning a race for power between Maxis and Richtofen. Ultimately, Victus ends up activating the tower in Maxis's favour, whilst also freeing Avogadro from his containment after being sent here from Camp Edward, where they then move on to the location of the second tower. Victus was teleported by Richtofen to a skyscraper in the crumbled city of Shanghai, Province 22, China, in an attempt to still gain control. Maxis contacts Victus once again, where he tells them to activate the second polarization device for him. Meanwhile, Richtofen attempts to blackmail Samuel into activating it for him by threatening to reveal to his allies he consumed the meat of the undead. Every time the group was killed by zombies, Richtofen would use his power to bring them back with no memory of having been killed before. But still, Victus activate the second polarization device in favor of Maxis. After this, the voice of Maxis and Richtofen cease for some time, leaving Victus to wander the world, where eventually they reach the rift, hoping to find answers about the unforeseen forces commanding them. They traveled through the Sahara Desert and by December 31st, 2035, found themselves in an old western town buried underground near the rift in southern Angola. While exploring the town, in one of the cells, Victus find Arthur. Maxis then once again contacted the survivors, asking them to activate the final polarization device in his favor. Meanwhile, Samuel was tasked for the same objective by Richtofen, as it was also the last tower he needed to mend the rift and gain ultimate power, but still, they activated the final tower for Maxis. And now corrupted by the Dark Aether, he reveals his true intentions. He punishes Richtofen by trapping his soul inside of a zombie, creating Undead Richtofen. Maxis then plucks Samantha's soul out of Richtofen's body on Moon, joining him in Argotha. However, when she witnesses the evil that has corrupted her father, when a temporal rift opens in Dimension 63, she uses it to travel there to reach out to that timeline's version of Maxis for help. A few days later, just before Maxis destroys Earth, Primus Richtofen from an alternate timeline opens a rift for Victus, allowing them to escape. They're pursued by undead Richtofen and an army of zombies as they're sent on their new journey. Now, in a different dimension, Dimension 63 in 1300, unlike in the original timeline, Pablo Marinus begins documenting the Great War, including everything he learned about the Keepers, the Apothecans, and Element 115. Regarding Element 115's power, he noted that a site in northern France contains massive deposits of the element. After the Great War ends, in northern in France, a tomb is constructed to honour the fallen soldiers of the Great War. Within it, statues of Primus are constructed to symbolise the hope that if one day a great evil falls upon mankind, they may return. Several centuries later, Dr. Ludwig Maxis, along with Dr. Edward Richtofen, who would later be known as Primus Richtofen, joined Group 935. Having lost his parents at a young age, Richtofen comes to view Maxis as a father figure. In 1914, Primus Richtofen is visited by another version of himself who hands him two blood vials and explains he would need this blood and when the time comes, it would protect him. The other version of Primus Richtofen then leaves through a rift. A couple years later in 1916, Group 935 discover the journal of Pablo Marinus. Using information gathered from the journal, Group 935 begin work at a dig site in northern France, where they discover a series of underground tombs. They struggle to gain access to the tomb's main chamber until the entrance unexpectedly opened after soldiers started listening to a recording of Le Source Noir. This was when the camp's exposure to Element 115 began. In 1917, using information from Pablo's journal and the tomb's main chamber, Maxis draws schematics for the creation of four elemental staffs, he instructs Richtofen to begin their construction. The more Maxis reads of the Great War, the more he begins to question his understanding of the scientific world and the true nature of the universe itself. He finds himself open to the possibility of a higher power. Group 935 then begin experimenting with Element 115, dubbed Divinium by Maxis, and successfully create localized energy fields which appear to function as portals. Maxis noted that objects could pass through them and speculates that the rift may have opened gateways across space and time. This was the rift that allowed Samantha to enter this dimension and reach out to this version of Maxis from Agatha. She begins begging him for help and reveals that she is his daughter. Group 935 continue experimenting with Element 115 and the Rift, where one day an ancient box arrives through one of the portals. The box had the power to manifest weapons from different eras. Maxis feared that Element 115 was disrupting the space time continuum. Following the installation of Element 115 power generators, reports began to surface of ancient figures emerging from the dig site 
corresponding with the mysterious deaths of several Group 935 soldiers. These ancient figures were undead knights from the Great War. Using Element 115, Group 935 later constructed three robots called Freya, Odin and Thor, and not long after, Primus Richthofen noted that despite Group 935's progress at the dig site, he was troubled by Maxis's growing obsession with Pablo's diary. At this point, Primus, Dempsey, Takio and Nikolai were dispatched by their countries to gather intel and investigate Group 935. They were to find out about their weapon technology and capabilities. By 1918, Maxis had become completely obsessed with the voice of Samantha, who spoke to him constantly. He believed her to be the key to everything. Several days later, Maxis was completely consumed by Samantha's voice and swore to no longer serve Group 935's mission. Believing his mentor had been affected by Element 115 like others at the dig site, Richthofen reported Maxis's erratic behaviour to Group 935 senior staff. But by June the 4th, Element 115 awakens undead knights from the Great War and quickly consumes the camp. Maxis is rendered catatonic by Element 115, and so before he turns, Primus Richthofen removes his brain. At this point, Dempsey, Takio and Nikolai confront Richthofen, but are forced to work together to survive against the closing in zombie horde. They place Maxis's brain inside of a drone and help free Samantha from her imprisonment in Argotha. Primus had finally been reunited and Samantha sends them to the next destination. At this point, Maxis's brain finally arrives in Argotha and this is when Dr. Monty decides to step in. Monty brings Maxis's brain to the house, recreates a physical manifestation of him and wipes the Maxis that was corrupted by the Dark Ether and buried from existence. Monty also reunites Samantha with the Dimension 63 incarnation of her father and Fluffy. Then Dr. Monty reveals his plan to Maxis to resolve the paradox brought by the multiverse and create a new reality, a perfect universe, one free of the Apothecans. But it would only work if they enlisted the aid of souls who had lived through and survived the fracturing. During a different time in Dimension 63 in the 1930s, the Shadow Man as part of his plan began to corrupt the Warden of Alcatraz, revealing to him that he would transform the island with the souls of four mobsters. These were Sal DeLuca, Billy Hansom, Albert the Weasel Arlington and Michael Finn O'Leary. However, these would only be used to create a trap to ensnare Primus Richthofen inside of a pocket dimension. In 1932, Sal, Billy, Allen, Finn were convicted of different crimes ranging from murder to robbery and sent to Alcatraz prison. The next year on April the 1st, 1933, Arlington managed to convince the other three mobsters they could build a plane on the rooftop and escape the island. And so, after escaping their cells on December the 31st, 1933, the others quickly realised that Al's plan to build a plane would never work. Embittered with rage, they plotted to get revenge where they lured him to the rooftop and stabbed him. A few days later in January 1934, Sal, Billy and Finn were executed by electric chair for the murder of Arlington. However, once they died, they became trapped in the afterlife, a never-ending cycle. While in purgatory, the mobsters would, once again, attempt to escape the prison, but this time, they successfully built the plane on the rooftop, they used it to fly off the island, where they crash into the Golden Gate Bridge. Their cycle would then reset, where they'd be sent back to the prison, and attempt to escape over and over again. After their third attempt, they finally realise they are trapped in a loop, and instead try and break it. The mobsters turn on Arlington once again, going to kill him, however, this would only continue the cycle, and so Al gets his revenge by killing the other three mobsters. With their cycle now broken, their spirits leave their body, where Al becomes a seagull and Sal, Billy and Finn become ghosts, leaving them still trapped in Alcatraz, but now free to roam around. Back in real life, with the mobsters executed, after being told by the Shadow Man he needs to sacrifice himself to fulfil his destiny, the Warden kills himself by electric chair before disappearing from Dimension 63. He becomes trapped in purgatory as Brutus. Several days later, Primus Richthofen then teleports to the house in Agotha and reunites with Maxis. Maxis explains to Primus Richthofen the plan to secure the Cronorium and locate the summoning key, and warned him that the test subjects must never be allowed to awaken. While inside the house, Primus Richthofen redis discovers his connection with Samuel Stuhlinger and decides to use Victus to acquire the Cronorium. Primus Richthofen then travels back to Dimension 63 in 1914, where he contacts members of the Illuminati and enlists them to help him build a laboratory beneath Alcatraz. Several days later, he meets with Stanley Ferguson, a prison guard at Alcatraz, and convinces him to assist with the Illuminati's construction 
of the Alcatraz Laboratory. Having overseen the construction of the lab, Richthofen then returns to the house in Agatha and begins to communicate with Stuhlinger from the original timeline in Buried, where he opens up a rift allowing Victus to escape before Maxis destroys the Earth. Primus Richthofen then also instructs Zombie Richthofen to follow Victus on their new journey. Together, they travel to a variety of locations in order to retrieve the Cronorium, where eventually they arrive at Zero Base, a facility created by an alternate version of Maxis in the Empty Earth. In order to access the base, the Victus crew first need to give blood samples, and so that's what they did. They then went into the facility, retrieved the Cronorium, and headed back to meet with Primus Richthofen. It was also at this point, Zombie Richthofen was instructed to retrieve the blood samples that Victus gave. When Primus Richthofen returned to his Alcatraz laboratory in 1941, he met with Victus where they handed over the Cronorium. Upon reading it, Primus Richthofen discovered numerous timelines documenting their fates, and learned about the blood vials. He would later write on the page, I know what I must do. He then left the lab, collected the Victus blood samples from undead Richthofen in the empty earth. After this, zombie Richthofen then used a rift to teleport to Groom Lake in 1963, where he infiltrated Hangar 4 where Ultimus was being kept. He touched Ultimus Richthofen's unresponsive body, transferring him his soul, in which zombie Richthofen then turned to ash. Primus Richthofen then went and retrieved the blood samples from Sal De Luca and Finn O'Leary from 1934, and then travelled back to 1914 Origins to give them to his younger self. Next, Primus Richthofen returned to the laboratory and offered Victus to be put on ice inside suspension devices, where they would be kept safe until a perfect and safe final world arrives. Victus eventually agreed to this. Then, Richthofen travels to Dimension 2210, where he kills an innocent version of himself, collects a soul, and gives it to Dr. Monty, where he is turned into a child in the house known as Eddie. Now, back in 1943, the Shadow Man, who was posing as Mr. Rapt, hires a reporter to recover artifacts from the South Pacific and Siberia. Among these is the summoning key. The reporter also speaks to Stanley Ferguson, the now retired prison guard who worked at Alcatraz, where Ferguson gave the reporter a detailed account of the death of the four mobsters. After learning their fate, the Shadow Man then travels back in time to the 1930s, where he begins to manipulate the Warden of Alcatraz. The next year, as requested by the Shadow Man, the reporter arrives in Morgue City, where he is told to track down Floyd Campbell, Jessica Rose, Nero Blackstone and Jackie Vincent. After gathering enough information, the reporter sends a telegram providing their details, where the Shadow Man then influences the crew of Campbell, Rose, Blackstone and Vincent into killing someone they know. Aware of the Shadow Man's actions, Monty writes a letter to the reporter warning him not to give the summoning key to anyone, and on April the 21st, 1944, Primus Richthofen arrives in Morgue City, where he learned that the reporter had the summoning key, and so he confronted him. The reporter then begins to wave Monty's letter to Richthofen, ordering him to stay away, before he attacks him, and in self-defense, Primus Richthofen kills the reporter, but was still unable to retrieve the artifact as the crate the summoning key was locked in was sealed by ancient magic. A few days later, after being manipulated by the Shadow Man, Floyd, Jessica, Nero and Jack awaken in a twisted version of Morgue City. The Shadow Man tricks them into performing rituals which give the Apothecans access to Dimension 63. After realising what the Shadow Man had done and that he was evil, the four then work along with the Keepers to defeat him, eventually trapping his soul inside of the summoning key. Suddenly, Primus Richthofen steps through a rift, steals the summoning key, and thanks the four for their efforts before leaving the dimension. The next day, the Apothecans destroy Dimension 63, also destroying the Shadows of Evil characters. Back with the Primus crew, after travelling from Origins to hunt down different versions of Ultimus Richthofen, Dempsey, Takio and Nikolai eventually arrive at the Darius facility, moments after Ultimus Richthofen teleported Maxis and Samantha away. They ordered Ultimus Richthofen to awaken the test subjects, when suddenly the teleporter is activated, Ultimus Richthofen Richthofen opens it, and inside is Primus Richthofen. He steps out, now in possession of the summoning key, he shoots and kills Ultimus Richthofen. It is at this point in time that triggers fractures across space and time. To convince his crew members, Primus Richthofen pretends to collect his soul inside of the key, and in the absence of Ultimus Richthofen, not knowing he had been killed, Dr. Groff 
takes control of Group 935. Primus then lights up a beacon within the Darius facility, enabling Maxis to know when and where they are. Next, using a giant robot from Darius, Primus pursue one of the Group 935 trucks, carrying a cryostasis pod containing Ultimus Dempsey. The robot, however, was shot down by the soldiers, forcing Primus to continue on foot. They reach the gondola station where it takes them up to Darius and Draco Castle, however, they were too late. Ultimus Dempsey had already been sent towards Griffin Station on a rocket, and so, in an attempt to retrieve it, Primus Richtofen poses as his ultimate self to fool Dr. Groff, who becomes suspicious of Richtofen's abnormal behaviour. Eventually, Primus redirect the rocket containing Ultimus Dempsey's pod to hit the castle courtyard, and in retaliation, Groff then activates the failsafe, preventing them from tampering with the pod. Primus then used the Vril device from the cryopod to conjure up the spirit of a Keeper. The Keeper then teleports the MPD from Griffin Station to the castle, but in the process becomes corrupted by the Dark Aether. Primus used the summoning key to activate the MPD, and after battling the Keeper, they launch dozens of V2 rockets towards the moon, destroying it along with all of Group 935's members with Griffin Station. As they then approach Ultimus Dempsey's pod, Richtofen then reveals his plan to Primus, which is to preserve the souls of Ultimus inside of the summoning. And key. Dempsey, though initially resentful to the idea, eventually agreed to the plan. He took it upon himself to disable the pod's life support system, ending the life of Ultimus Dempsey. As he died, Primus Richtofen collects his soul inside of the key, meaning their goal at Darius and Draka is complete. In the meantime at the Rising Sun facility, it becomes overrun by the undead, leaving Division 9 no other choice but to begin construction of a new island facility. Ultimus Takio is dispatched by the Emperor to oversee Division 9's work. They expand experimentation to include prisoners of war, Division 9 staff, spiders and mystical beasts. When Ultimus Takio finally arrives at the facility, he is betrayed and, on orders of the Emperor, is taken prisoner and used as one of their test subjects. Division 9 then go on to create dragons for Germany to use in the war on the Eastern Front, and it was also at this point in Group 935's asylum facility, Cornelius Purnell sent a transmission to Peter McCain, telling him to rendezvous at the abandoned Rising Sun facility. But back to Primus, after leaving Eagle's Nest, they then teleport to a Japanese ship in the Pacific Ocean, where they are taken hostage. While a Japanese officer was interrogating them about the summoning key, a massive wave strikes the ship, sending everyone off balance. A brief fight takes place on the ship as the officer drops the artifact. Primus then jump overboard as the ship explodes and swim to a nearby island at the Division 9 facility. Once here, Primus discovered deep inside Division 9's labs, locked in a cell, a giant thrasher. This giant thrasher turns out to be Ultimus Takio, who turned into this monster when being experimented on. Ultimus Takio then reveals to Primus Takio that it was the Emperor who ordered Division 9 to torture and experiment on him. Primus Takio then offers Ultimus Takio a chance of redemption, where he commits Sapaku. Ultimus Takio is killed, and Richtofen then collects his soul inside of the summoning key. Just before travelling to collect the final soul, Primus then travel to another version of Primus Richtofen's laboratory beneath Alcatraz, where they meet up with him before he acquired the summoning key. Primus Richtofen gives them the blood samples of the Victus crew, and Primus then return to Setsubonoshima, where they move on to their next destination. At this point, Peter McCain finally reaches Shinonuma, where he jumps out of a plane, about to parachute down into the Rising Sun facility, when a temporal rift opens below him as a result of the fracturing of the universe, and sucks him in. Primus's next destination is Stalingrad. From the Japanese island, they open up a rift, step in, and are spat out of another rift that opens above the city. They use the body of Peter McCain, who is also spat out here after falling into the rift back at the Rising Sun facility. They use his body to activate his parachute and land safely, and when they arrive, Primus discover an ongoing battle between dragons and Russian giant robots. Ultimus Nikolai is revealed to be the sole survivor, fighting the zombies inside a robot. While exploring Stalingrad, Primus come across S-O-P-H-I-A, otherwise known as Sophia, an AI created by Maxis. She tells Primus she was initially Maxis's assistant back in the 1940s when she was attacked by a zombie in Kino der Toten, and before she turned, Maxis placed her inside of a robot. Maxis then placed her here to oversee the facility's operations, and ever since the zombie outbreak, she'd been stranded. Sophia asks Primus to perform several tasks before a master password could be typed in, prompting Primus to complete the Ascension Protocol. As they continue to follow Sophia's instructions, they come across Gersh, 
who recognised them, yet knew they were not the same versions that freed him from the Casimir mechanism. Anyway, Primus tricked Gersh into entering the systems of Sophia to extract information from him, leading to his destruction, and now with the Ascension Protocol completed, Sophia flies away through space and time, hoping to find Maxis, and during their mission at Stalingrad, Dr. Monty contacts Primus, telling them he has seen their misdeeds, and tells them to fix the universe as they were partly responsible for its fracture. Primus then finally reach Ultimus Nikolai who makes a temporary truce with them to kill the dragon, however, upon the dragon's death, Primus asks Ultimus Nikolai to surrender, Ultimus Nikolai refuses, and a brief fight breaks out between them. Nevertheless, Primus defeat Ultimus Nikolai, who is then approached by his Primus self, and as he's walking up to him, Ultimus Nikolai asks if he would kill him now. Primus Nikolai apologises, stating he wishes there was another way, and remarked he was suffering the same pain. He explained that Ultimus Nikolai originally turned to vodka to hide the agonising memories of his wife that was killed during an air raid, and in a fit of rage, Ultimus Nikolai fires upon his Primus self, but only hitting his armoured plate, and in retaliation, Primus Nikolai responds by killing his Ultimus self allowing Richtofen to secure the final soul. With all of the souls collected, Primus Richtofen then sends them to the house in Agotha, where Monty turns them into children, and when the souls arrive in the house, Maxis tells Samantha and Eddie to put their toys away and come down to the basement. Shortly after, Primus then travel to the house in Agotha, where Primus Richtofen is reunited with Maxis. He hands over the summoning key and destroys the teleporter once and for all, and as a few hours pass, later that night, while asleep, Maxis begins hearing the voice of the Shadow Man begging for his help from within the summoning key. Maxis takes the artifact, releases the Shadow Man, in turn becoming trapped inside of the key himself, and once outside of the house, the Shadow Man opens a gateway for the Apothecans to enter Monty's perfect universe, fracturing and corrupting Argotha, revealing the Apothecan Sun. In order to save Monty's universe, Primus ends up fighting against the Shadow Man and the Apothecans. During the battle, Sophia arrives in Argotha, and using the summoning key and the Canorium, Primus finally defeats the Shadow Man. Dr. Maxis, who is inside of the summoning key, along with Sophia, then plunge themselves into the Apothecan Sun, banishing the Apothecans and sacrificing themselves to save Monty's perfect world. After the battle was over, Monty realises during the fight with the Shadow Man, Primus drank the blood from their blood vials. This blood came from realities already closed off. This prevented Primus from fading out of existence and resulted in a paradox. As Monty was looking for a way to get rid of Primus, Primus Richtofen suggested they send him somewhere else, somewhere they've never been before, and so Monty sends them back to the year 1294, where they saved Pablo during the Great War between humanity and the Apothecans, ultimately resetting the loop and continuing the cycle. The events of the timeline would loop over and over again. However, after the cycle playing out many times, no one knows how long the loop was replayed, but one time, something changed. This time when Pablo had a vision of the Great War from Siberia in 1294, as usual, he was saved by the Magua by Primus, but this time, Primus Richtofen realised that Monty was lying about securing a better tomorrow, and figured out that actually, by going back to the Great War, it wouldn't break the cycle, as it was the end of their loop. The Primus crew would die here, and then the cycle would be reset, where they would meet once again hundreds of years later, in Origins. Primus Richtofen finally understood that Monty wasn't inherently evil, he was only ever trying to survive by saving the multiverse the only way he knows how. By fulfilling the prophecy of the cycle, Primus Richtofen and Dr. Monty had forged an endless loop. The Great War wasn't the beginning of the cycle, it was the end. They would die here, the loop would then reset, where they would meet again hundreds of years later. And so, now realising this, with the help of Pablo Marinus, this version of Richtofen, who would go on to be called Great War Richtofen, started a plan to break the cycle. This time, Pablo Marinus decided to defend him from the zombies, while post-war Richtofen powered up a teleportation device and used it to travel to the Alcatraz pocket dimension. Before he left, Pablo gave him the elemental gem from the fire staff, and it was at this point that caused the Canorian pages to change. When Great War Richtofen finally arrived in Alcatraz, he informed Primus Richtofen of the cycle and waited in cryostasis on ice in the laboratory for the right moment. Not long after, another iteration of Primus arrived in the Alcatraz pocket dimension, coming from the Japanese island facility. However, when they got here, they were further away from the lab than they intended. 
Eventually, they made their way to the laboratory, and when they got there, they found Primus Richtofen, before his journey to Morg City, reading the Canorium as he waited for them to arrive. The lone Richtofen stated they were late before handing them the blood vials. He then handed the Canorium over to the other version of Primus Richtofen, told him to read it again, and when he did, a rift appeared. Upon reading it, Primus Richtofen realised that the pages had changed. It was at this point that the lone Richtofen left through the rift, leaving Primus now trapped inside of the Alcatraz pocket dimension. While trapped in Alcatraz, Primus Richtofen started hearing Samuel Stuhlinger in his head. He realised that the lighthouse on the island must have triggered a chain reaction in the ether. Primus also discovered the Warden's inner sanctum, where they found his dead body attached to an electric chair. And as they go to retrieve the Canorium, Arlington, now in the form of a seagull, stole the book. After retrieving it, Primus then placed it on the Warden's body, and using it, Primus helped several spirits trapped in the dimension. They then placed the summoning key inside of the Warden's dead body to be used as a conduit to his soul. This results in the partial destruction of the lighthouse, which fires a red beam of light towards the sky, prompting the Warden to attack Primus, stating they now belong to him. He knocks them out, locking each of them in a cell. Now locked up, the Warden explains to Primus they are to be trapped in this pocket dimension forever, suffering with their blood extracted by a machine he built called the Dark Mechanism. It was planned to be used as the key to keeping the gateway open to free the Apothecans and the Shadow Man. However, after the Warden left, Arlington arrives and helps Primus to escape their cells. As they're running back to the laboratory, the Warden stops them once again, but before he can do anything, the spirits of Sal, Billy and Finn restrain him and launch him into the sky. When Primus get back into the lab, they begin the thawing sequence for one of the cryopods. Primus then confront the warden in front of the dark mechanism, and during the fight, Primus Richtofen steps onto the dark mechanism and gives his blood. In the meantime, the thawed out cryopod opens, revealing Great War Richtofen inside, holding the elemental gem. He then joins the fight and uses the gem to purge the evil from Alcatraz killing the Warden and the zombies, freeing their spirits from the pocket dimension. At this point, Great War Richtofen reveals to Primus Nikolai that the future has changed. He hands him the Canorium, telling him to read it. He explains to Primus Nikolai that he must keep his soul in order to defeat Dr. Monty. Great War Richtofen then walks up to Primus Richtofen, who was on the Dark Mechanism, and tells him that the cycle is now broken, and that their insurance policies, the Blood Vials, are no longer needed. He then grabs the summoning key, joins Primus, who smashed their blood vials on the floor, before stepping through the portals, leaving Primus Richtofen to die in the pocket dimension. After leaving Alcatraz, Primus Nikolai, now leading the crew, teleport to Hangar 4 at Groom Lake, along with Dempsey, Takio, and another version of Primus Richtofen in 1963, where they meet up with their ultimate selves. Primus Nikolai reveals to them that there is a water fight, the Great War, with Ultimus and Primus now teamed up, they teleport away from the hangar. Primus and Ultimus then arrive at Camp Edward, Nevada, on October the 13th, 2025. They reactivate the facility and its AI system, Rushmore, where Nikolai reveals to the crew that he is here to collect the elemental shard. He needs it for the next step of their journey. But since the shard was locked inside of the APD, Rushmore first needed to test the characters so he knew he could trust them in order to give them access to it. During their exploration, they find Peter McCain trapped inside of the ADM robots. With the help of Rushmore, which deemed Peter as someone very important to humanity's future, Primus and Ultimus free Peter's soul by putting him inside of an elemental orb, in which he then flies away. And now having gained Rushmore's trust, Primus and Ultimus open the pyramid. When they do, inside, they discover Cornelius Purnell, who was transformed by the Shard into the entity called Avogadro. With the release of Avogadro, a nuke was detonated above the facility that was supposed to kill him, but was ineffective. And after a short battle, Ultimus and Primus managed to contain him back inside of the APD, long enough for Rushmore to transfer him to the Hanford site. After the characters retrieve the elemental Shard, Maxis then contacts them, saying it's too late. Dr. Monty had figured out the cycle had been broken, and so Maxis quickly teleports Samantha and Eddie away from the house before being eaten alive by Dr. Monty. When Samantha and Eddie arrive at Camp Edward, she unleashes her fury, causing tremendous damage to the camp, before stating to Eddie that they would fight the Great War, kill Dr. Monty, and burn the house to the ground. After their journey in Camp Edward, Primus and Ultimus, accompanied by Samantha and Eddie, then settle down in a forest. They proceed to celebrate their future victory around the campfire, drinking and eating. Primus Nikolai explains to them the Great War, the Apothecans, the Keepers, the Dark Ether, the Shadow Man and Monty 
are just legend and tales from the Cronorium. He reveals both the Shadow Man and Monty became corrupted by the Dark Aether, one from his own ambition and the other desperately trying to save his friend. He also reveals that the Greatest War was the one they fought against themselves. And as they keep celebrating into the night, Primus Nikolai tells them to think about what they desire. Unbeknownst to them, Primus Nikolai had poisoned their drinks. Both the Primus and Ultimus characters die, besides from Primus Nikolai. However, Ultimus Richtofen comes back to life as Zombie Richtofen. Richtofen then releases Victus from their cryogenic pods back in Alcatraz, opening up a rift for them, allowing them to escape. He tells Stuhlinger he is needed to defeat Dr. Monty. Victus are sent to the abandoned Group 935 Siberian facility, where they are told to build the Argothan device. In the facility, they encounter Pablo Marinus, who has been living in the lighthouse since 1945, where Pablo tells Victus he can build the Argothan device for them. Victus recover the Vril vessel from inside of the facility, as well as the Apothecan blood, which was stranded on the Ascension Group ship. They also retrieve the Elemental Shard sent to them by Primus Nikolai, and give all three of these items to Pablo. As they activate the Argothan device, it begins to evolve, affecting all of the Element 115 around the area. Primus Nikolai then tasks Victus to protect the device until it reaches its final state, and once charged, they return it to Pablo, where he uses it to create a portal to go to the Great War and help Primus Richtof and break the cycle. Victus then retrieve the device and send it back to Primus Nikolai, and now with the Argothan device in his hands, Primus Nikolai uses it to destroy the summoning key before killing undead Richtofen. With the destruction of the summoning key, the multiverse collapses and the whole of creation starts to fade away. Victus, the zombies, the apothecans, Element 115, the Shadow Man, even Monty himself, everything that spewed forth from the ether was banished to where it belonged, the Dark Aether. And finally, Primus Nikolai then asks Samantha to kill him. With the death of Primus and Ultimus, the paradox is resolved, and as the multiverse fades away, Samantha and Eddie are left to walk into the light, into the unknown, into a new world.